Well, Christine Crossy, thank you very much for stopping by one random afternoon and just <laughs> appearing out, uh, out of the blue. <laughs> it happened that way. That's how I met Barry. That's how I met you. Yeah. That's even how I got here, I think. So what's brought you to the Biscuit Factory? Whew. It's kind of a long story, but also not that complicated. I was looking for a place to host a weekend of witchcraft and dancing. And uh, during the pandemic, and uh, <laughs> I asked my roommate, I said, hey, you know, what, what would be a good venue for this? And he said, oh, the Biscuit Factory, that's perfect. It's kind of funky. It's the right vibe for what you're doing. You should totally go check it out. So I set something up with Fee. She let me in. <laughs> and now I'm here with you guys. I eat it. Right. So you start new you start new classes on Monday. Yes, on the fourteenth. So how, like, explain a wee bit about actually instead of going straight into the witchcraft and the dancing, you're obviously not a native, right? States. What, what um, gave it away? Right. <laughs> American, right? So how, like, what, how did, like, how, what made you cross the pond? How, how did you end up here? So I definitely. I've struggled with the word American and identifying with that word. Because I would say growing up, I definitely did not identify with that word. And it was something that was a bit of a, uh, a sore spot amongst my parents, particularly my mother, because my mother's Canadian. And she was very adamantly Canadian that she would never become an American mm. citizen. And to me, I'm always like, well, well, why are we here? Because my dad was also not American. My dad was Latvian. And he came over to escape the Russian occupation with his family at a very young age. And so he was an immigrant. My mother was an immigrant. And I was the firstborn in the United States. And that was super weird because people will say Canadians are the same as Americans and they're not. That's like an English, really that's not. like an English Scotland thing. Isn't yeah, it? I know it's the same. <laughs> people will say, oh, you're from the UK and, it, and England and Scotland is the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. It's not at all. And it's the same with Canada and mm -hmm. US. So yeah that, that that's the starting point what's the difference it? then like so what what would you what say like, like what would you say because i've like i've got uh relatives in america washington state mm -hmm. which is where you're from eh? Seattle. correct aye and uh aye like so what's the that like what what like how are canadians seen and how are americans seen what's the what's the or like what's the views on yeah what's the i divide? think really like easy thing to pinpoint with Canadians is there's a whole lot more um, options for people with their health where you have socialized health care you can go and get things for free or a cheaper rate where people all the time are going bankrupt in these states because they can't afford their health mm. like one thing happens to them they end up in the ER and then suddenly they're ten thousand dollars in debt so there's a lot of things around capitalism and making money off of health in the states that I feel is not the case in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so people are more willing to reach out a hand in Canada because that's what you do. Right. You help people. It's not me against you fighting for the same resources. We're sharing the resources. America has like a long history of that, eh? The privatization of like healthcare. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay. I'll I'll put a little drop in there. Back when I was going to Indonesia for school, I had to get a bunch of shots. I couldn't get them in the states because they were astronomical as far as how much they cost. So I went across the border to do the same thing. Really? You just got them done for free and came back. Not exactly for free. The rabies one actually did cost money. But comparatively speaking, you can't even get a rabies vaccine unless you actually have rabies in the States. Right. Because they save them for the dogs. I wonder how many people actually do that in the States. Can you live close to the border? 
wonder if him, there must be like thousands of people do that <clears throat> more i would say you know I'm, I'm sure there are people that i mean i definitely know that there were people living in canada and commuting into the states for work because it's better to live in canada but the money pays better in mm. the states right. which i think is why a lot of people go there because of opportunities to make money but for me that was never something that was a big deal to me uh -huh. my contribution was always how can i better help society how can i invest in myself to give a better experience to others and coming here now we'll, we'll circle back to the original question always i'm just trying to answer the question you asked me um but uh, i i've been circling around the globe uh -huh. for several years where i wasn't really in one place for longer than a month ever and it's so like a bit of a nomad i was definitely a nomad so i was teaching dance everywhere that i went and that was really lovely i got to see 20 some countries and teach some people their first dance steps help people that already had communities make them better and what I had going on in Seattle, I'd gotten it to a place where it could fend for itself. It didn't need me to run. I had enough teachers that I'd created that they could run the programs. And I said, great, that's basically what I wanted to get to with this, is that I create something that's self-sufficient. And I don't need to be part of it anymore. Mm -hmm. Not like as a negative thing, but just like to create something that can be its own living, breathing organism was mm -hmm. what I wanted. And so when I reached that level, it didn't really feel like there was much of a space for me anymore. And I needed to grow and do different things. So I wanted to come to a university here in Europe. And I did get into university in Europe. And I am taking classes at the moment, but I'm also applying to another program that's here in the UK. Um, which was brought upon by lockdown because I was thinking a lot about what I wanted. But when I was looking for a new place to be my new hub, mm -hmm. I spent some time in Scotland. And every time that I came back, there seemed to be something else that was pulling me in to say, we want you here, you should be here, you will create something great here, let's put all the opportunities out so that you will stay. So there was definitely a connection from the first time that I came, and Here and now are. I'm I'm stuck here. Not like stuck. Like I a, want to be here. Yeah, it's like a journey, but you. It's almost like you're following a path in terms of like going to a place, staying for a month, doing what you need to do in that environment, and then knowing mm. when it's time to move on. It's like a purpose almost. So what's the connection to Scotland? So. I have three great grandparents that happen to be from the UK, two of which are from Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. And um, I always wanted to come to Scotland. Uh, it was always hug me on uh, New Year's. Um, <laughs> Thinking that I'll be helping this year. No, but they, that's like I'm up in Canada with my relatives, and then you call the relatives, and that's what they're saying on the phone. Hug me, right? Yeah. And, and so it was definitely something that felt like it was me, it was my roots, mm -hmm. and I wanted to experience that. And then being here for the first time, I felt like it was home. Mm -hmm. So how, what, what does that mean then when you say it feels home? What does home like feel like for you? Mm, such a juicy question. Well, it's <laughs> an interesting one, it is an interesting one. <laughs> an interesting question. No, what, what makes something home to someone, I think, is a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but part of it, I think, is the culture of feeling like you fit within the culture. And another part of it, the weather is what I like because I like things to be really green. I also like where it's at infrastructure-wise, like it's not too big, it's not too small, everything is here, mm. and it doesn't require being in a car or sitting in traffic for long periods of time. Where in Seattle, where I'm from, 
to go somewhere that could take 15 minutes to drive if it wasn't super trafficy. Mm -hmm. It will take you 45 minutes to drive and then 20 minutes circling around to find parking. Mm -hmm. So it's like a completely different experience and then every day you're part of that grind of giving this few hours of your life to something that makes you angry. <laughs> my, my uncle always, well, my, my uncle Rick, uh, so whenever we go over there and like, he always usually goes out to Seattle for like two or three days. And my uncle Rick was always like that. He's like, I'm not fucking driving to Seattle at this time or try to leave at this fucking no. time. He says, it's just, no. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. Rage already started. And then when one time we came back and we got caught in it, it was right here. It just took you like, honestly, a couple of hours even just to like get out the city up there. It was like just gridlock. It was just like, oh, nuts, man. No, no. it's totally nuts. Mm. And also the cost of living is very high there. So to pay your rent, to pay your food and entertainment, you need to be making decent money. And as a dance instructor, I did well in Seattle, but definitely not well enough mm. to have a, a proper quality of life. So being here, it's like things are much cheaper, things are much more convenient. Mm. And also the people here have been so friendly and just willing to offer out a hand and give really valuable friendship where i feel like people that i've met here how quickly we became close and talked about things that were very personal for me people i've known for 10 years 15 years in the states don't know those things about me and would be shocked they would be like whoa i didn't know that about you oh, we don't have a personal relationship i've heard that a lot like well like People are very Scottish people here. that like we are like well, people think we're very open and friendly. Yeah. And it's, uh, like it's the impression I get like is that Scottish people are like that, but I don't. Yeah. But I'm sure I there are. That. I'm sure there are people like that. Like everywhere in the world, world, do you know what I mean? Everywhere. There's in the world. also this thing called the Seattle freeze, which people talk about, where people from Seattleite are they're called Seattleites, and um, they're just very icy. And it takes a long time to get to know them because they put walls up. Why is the walls up? What is it they're protecting from themselves? Just there's a trust. There's you know, I think I've I've done a lot of research in my day to try and like understand human condition a lot more. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like some of it has to do with the fact that it's in America, but also where it is in America because you're up north and it's colder and you have a higher um, past percentage of rain and but that's why that area is so green as well yeah, like that, yeah. The no no it's beautiful. beautiful i'm not saying it's not beautiful it mm. is beautiful but because of the conditions and the facts of how americans are i feel like those things have mixed together to create a somewhat hostile type of person that's more passive aggressive in how they deal with people. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't know, I always blame the environment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you've come to Edinburgh and we are a bit out there in terms of like, you know, it's a tourist attraction, we've got a lot of history here. But you've come to Leaf as well and it's, again, you've come to the Biscuit Factory, which is probably one of the coolest wee places in Leaf in terms right. of a wide variety of people. So it's good to know that you've like found your space as such. Yeah, and I think coming back to what you were asking about, like what feels like home is when mm. you can say like, oh, I found my bit, I found my people, and this works for me, mm -hmm. versus that struggle constantly trying to fight for something, you're like, oh, this just works. Hey. This is nice. I think that's a very, uh, like I think that's a key place to get to in your life, I would think. like. That we, we maybe no try to fight for something, and you're no try to create something. You're just like happy, like where you are. Like you're content. Aye. You're content, but you feel at peace. Aye. With yourself and your surroundings. Definitely. Like, really like your journey and the amount of places that you've been as well. Aye. It shows you that to feel like the way you feel here, 
terms of you've experienced loads of different places, it's you've got to listen to more. You obviously have listened to that, but yeah, it's important. Yeah. Twenty? You say twenty countries? I mean, I could oh, yeah. like try and put them on my fingers if you'd like me to go. <laughs> yeah, I could talk about where I've been. I am. I don't know if that's the direction you wanted to go, but we can. Um, I've been to Korea, to Indonesia, to Singapore, to Japan, to Thailand, to Australia, in terms of that neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. um, Australia is fabulous. It's totally wild. I love it. <laughs> I couldn't live there because it's too far away from everything. Mm. Like, you're stranded being there. It's really hard to get out. Mm. Um, I wonder if that's why so many Australians travel. Twenty-four hours. I it's not. I would. Uh, I would. They travel. Yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, it worked in Australia. Yes. I mean, you're, you're stuck in a farm for months because you know you've got to work in Australia to like earn your keep for a while to earn uh, your visas and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You're stuck in a farm. The boy just refused to take him back to get to go home. In. Oh really? Uh, and it was like he's an outback. He's like, if you want to take a walk when you go, but you'll be back here in no time. Uh, Need a drink. Good luck, mate. Yeah. Uh, good luck, mate. Right? Oh, no, but I mean, I loved going to Asia. Asia's great, but it's definitely not my culture. Mm. And so I'm happy to go visit there and appreciate it, but I don't feel like I could ever acclimate to it. Uh, Especially with the language barrier, depending on where you are. There isn't a language barrier in Singapore because everyone speaks English. But Japan, Korea, not as much. What was Japan like in terms of technology? Because I heard it's way out there. People, I feel like, have this strange idea that Japan is like in the future and yeah. it's like a science fiction movie. I sent a picture somewhere in Japan to my mother and she goes, Oh, it looks normal. <laughs> <laughs> that is the impression you get in Japan, eh? Yeah, that's the impression you get in Japan. Oh, Just like, like it's so high tech that you're like, oh, it's I like wouldn't sort say of... that it's necessarily more high tech than it is other places, especially coming from the US. I wouldn't say that it's particularly mm. more techy. Yes, there are vending machines everywhere, and to go to a restaurant, you will put your coins and pick your item, and then you will go in the restaurant, and they've basically already made it for you, and then you can sit down. Like, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I like that. Definitely. Is there no places you can just pay to go to sleep? Like I know that as well. Like capsule hotels? Yeah, oh, yeah, like there's places you can just, like, if you just want to go for fucking 40 wings <laughs> and nothing, you can just pay for them. So, I'm, you know what it's actually about right? is that trains out of Tokyo stop at a certain time and if you're still out drinking or whatever it is that you're doing then you're stuck in Tokyo you're not going to get back to wherever you're staying and ah. so people that are living that lifestyle of you know staying in the clubs past midnight or whatever they'll like stay Donald. in these capsule <laughs> that was me. that was <laughs> me. come a long way I'm sober everyone I ate my sober <laughs> wow a sober lockdown yeah I'm, I'm very well my miss is pregnant only really, so nice. it's, yeah, it's a bit easier rather than me bedding and brilliant man in front of all that nah nice <laughs> Side by side. Oh. Side by side. side, by side. Pregnant together as well. I've got the old <laughs> lockdown belly. Indulging <laughs> the food, not drinking, I'll just eat. Ah, no, man. So how, what's the story behind the, the witchcraft and the dancing and stuff? Like, how did, <laughs> how, like, what, what, explain that, how did that all come about then? Gosh, um, that's, that's been a long time coming as well. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, I always was fascinated by witchcraft and fantasy and all of it and definitely was into astrology as soon as I knew about it and being involved in that also kind of dabbled in numerology I, I like that I like seeing patterns and things mm, and yeah. also the fact that it draws from the cosmos and and that uh, there's no doubt that these bodies that are around us affect us. Mm. I don't think people truly understand or give weight to it enough right. because there is a gravity that's pulling on you and they have different properties and they're different distances from us. 
So there's definitely something there and I wanted to look into it more. And then the other thing that happened with it is I have a really close friend who has been studying witchcraft and getting more and more into it. And so I've been learning from her and it's like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I want to read a little bit more about that. And then uh, I was talking to my dance partner and I said, hey, you know, I want us to like do something that's different. I want to do a Harry Potter experience where we have these different dance teachers that are head of household for particular topics within dance. And then you apply to the school and you get chosen for your house and we have tournaments and different things that you have to do surrounding dance. I want to do this thing. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should totally do that. I'm on board. Never seen Harry Potter, but I'm on board. <laughs> and I feel a man. I've never seen any of the I've never seen one of the I'm on it. I'm on it. Gryffindor. It's all the Gryffindor. I've never seen any of them. Slytherin over here, but <laughs> we won't get into that. And Barry's over here like, Hufflepuff. <laughs> Uh, the movies. A boy wizard. Uh, J.K. Rowling, I'm trying to get on the show so from anyway. Right enough, I am brilliant. If you were going to be on the show, <laughs> what character would you play? Um, ooh. And what, Harry Potter? Yeah. Who would that be? I always see myself as a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably, I'd, probably, I'd probably be Ron, eh? Oh, I love Ron. I'd probably be Ron. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. I don't think I'm, I'm not Harry Potter. No. I need to look that up now. No. I'm not like Ron. Maybe not red enough in the hair for Ron, but aye. I'll look that up. Like. Yeah, I, I was a bit like Hermione growing up, for sure. Yeah. Um, But I feel like as an adult, I possibly more of Nymphadora Tonks. You guys are like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, a little too yeah. deep in yeah, Harry Potter yeah. for me. <laughs> Clearly, I'm into it. Um, regardless, that was definitely a spark to the witchcraft business. And then we said, okay, we can't do this big event because COVID. So let's do something smaller that's like a prototype for what we want to do so that we know that it works. Da, da, da. And so I took it upon myself, hey, if we're going to be doing something that's witchcraft slash dancing, I need to actually educate myself on this matter and not just be focus, focus. I need to be legit. So I actually read the witchcraft uh, textbook and did all of the lessons, went through everything, and I loved it. I thought it was great. I found something that actually spoke to me that was a religion and I grew up not religious at all but interested in these kinds of weird things you can't explain and wanting to explain it with science and I feel like such as mm, such as well definitely how did everything become where, where do we come from? Why are we here? These kinds of questions. What are the existential stuff, man? Yeah, I love that stuff, same. Same. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it, you can go down that road. We could go down that road, or we could answer the initial questions. I think everybody question. really wants to know that, but a lot of people are quite scared to ask that. They don't want to find out, but for me, I'm, I'm really want to find out. Uh, I like, like, uh, how the world like, came to be. Uh, yeah. It's like, why are we here? What's the purpose? Like, what are you doing? Why, why are we doing the show? <laughs> Just. Well, you know, I can kind of answer that in two things. One of them is I study geology part time, and the first bit of geology is it tells you about the creation of the universe and everything expanding and everything being from a single 
singularity. And I love that I totally believe in that, but there's also a power to that expansion and we should be more tuned into that, I think. And then we get to witchcraft and it's all about tuning with nature, tuning with the planets, tuning with the cycles and the mm -hmm. seasons. And I really believe that there are these cycles and if we can ride the cycles, then we'll be able to be in our own flow and things will work for us, much as things have worked for me to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cycles, you know, we've talked, we've well, talked a lot about that. Do you mean yeah. like, like, the, like cycles <clears throat> of life? Repeat patterns and like, uh, in terms of like, you'll have, you know, the, like a cycle of a pattern of you keep doing the same things over and over until you become aware of what you're doing and you can kind of realise that you're making a mistake and you can change it and then level up as such by feeling and seeing things around you and you get you get little signs and warnings and stuff don't you to tell no, you. i feel like so much of what goes on around us is our own personal story mm. and we're projecting our own personal story on what is around us and then we blame what's around us for what happens to us mm. which makes no sense <laughs> Because it's coming from you. Yeah, look yourself in the mirror. You're the problem. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. So, so you're talking about like manifestation then, what be it good or bad, you you like create your own reality. So cycles, I was talking yeah, about Yeah, no, sorry, we do, totally diverged from cycles. It's all right, then you worry about it. When we think about cycles in terms of witchcraft, you're thinking about these two they refer to it as the rings of different deities, which you could use that word if you like. You also, I like to use the word the universe instead of something mm. like deity, but I get why it helps people understand it more, so I'm totally fine using that word. Um, but you have your growing season or the season of fertility where everything is blooming creatures are procreating everything is in abundance in that way and that would be the reign of the goddess which goes from spring through summer to the fall equinox and then from fall until that spring equinox you have the reign of the god or the hunt where it's all about going out and getting things because it's not just providing for you it's not a fertile time you have to hunt for it and so we're always going through those cycles and it just shows you how how important then like the elements in nature and all that are to to like like humankind so you mentioned like numerology as well right so seeing that from what i know like there's kind of like I like is there like a cycle in that? So there's like yeah, you get like personal years, eh? So there's like one to nine. Mm -hmm. so there's nine personal years, and then you heard of these very good. And then you go, and then every personal year is meant to have like a different meaning or like a different way in which depending yeah. on your so. I yeah, that type like thing that. cycles of life that you get to nine, and then you go back to like a you one year. It's like, and it's like a repeating kind of completion. Aye, like and a pattern. You start. And then you have to learn like another lesson. So you go back and aye, it's just fascinating all that, man. Just fascinating. I would say that I, I totally believe in that because if I go back every nine years, something major changed in my life. Mm. And two cycles ago um, was when I finished school university and I was applying to grad school I didn't get in and I was really beside myself I was really depressed because everything that I'd worked for suddenly was for naught and what was I going to do with myself and then I started teaching dance because someone asked me to not because I even sought it out but someone who I knew lost their dance partner and said hey will you come like fill in because I don't have anyone to work with and you're qualified and I said well I'm not doing anything else uh, I guess <laughs> like uh -huh. sure <laughs> and then that started this 10 year period of me becoming a professional dancer and touring around the world as a dancer 
so that was definitely that chapter. And then the new chapter started when I moved here. Oh. And that was not this January, but the April before that would have been my birthday. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I said, okay, I don't know where I'm going to live yet, but I have my Latvian passport. I have my entrance into the University of Stockholm. I'm going to go to Europe. I'm going to figure it out. This is it. I'm starting my, my life over. So when did you when did you sign up to yourself last year? That was um, April twenty nineteen. Yeah. And that just did, that was just like off the whim. Boom! I'm I'm going to go and do that. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. Boom! Off the whim. I would say that was premeditated for a long time. Do you think that? <laughs> how long? How long was it premeditated for? I saw myself as early as I can remember as a scientist, as a dancer as some like magical person that had a cottage somewhere in a place that seemed like where I was but not where I was mm. um, that felt some kind of pull in my ancestry and I saw that I was gonna be there that I was gonna have a hut that I was gonna have a bunch of animals and that this was like the reality of where I was gonna be when I grew up and then I was talking to a friend, um, and she's in the same place as me, which is kind of funny, that I feel like I am that person now. Minus the animals. I don't have any animals, unfortunately. But we'll get there. So, so I, Eventually. So you're Eventually. talking about from like a young age. Yeah. So it's <laughs> weird to hear that's like, that, that's like been in there from a young age. Yeah. And like as you've went through life, it's kind of like... It finally came out. Ah, you feel like you became like more of that person it was like you manifested it but you knew it so almost so do you believe then that that your life path is already mapped out i don't know about life path mapped out because i think there's still so many things that we can't foresee we can have this visualization but we don't know how we're going to get there but there is a lot of power in visualizing that path Mm -hmm. and going okay i'm not only gonna be this thing but i see myself getting there in this way right like that one of the things that we were talking about candle magic earlier where um <laughs> it's not that you're trying to attract a particular thing or a particular person you're thinking about who you are when you have those things like oh i want to attract love in my life Oh, what do I look like when I'm in love? What does that look like in my life? How does that show up? You're asking me a similar question to this. Aye. Another week there, aren't you? Uh, I can't remember what it was, but it's just like, how does that feel? Like being, how were we asking me about what, three years from now or four years from now? Aye, how would that, how, who is that person? What are you doing? What, where are you? Like, what's the surroundings? And aye. It's just that putting yourself in that feeling, smelling yeah. it, tasting it, touching it. Um, no, I would helpful. say that when you can identify those things and that <clears> picture <throat> becomes more and more vivid, you create that picture. And the key is as well, I think, well, it's like not, like in your mind you're kind of thinking about how am I going to get there, but it's like the universe then has its like own way of getting you there. The like universe that, will take care of the details. Uh, exactly, and it's like you can't possibly foresee I don't think how you would get there. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like things will happen on the way that I just didn't think you could possibly foresee. So it's like, uh, it's just, and then it comes back to like numbers. Can you mention numbers? Yeah. And you see, and like one on one, or you say just like two, two, two. two the day like, travel like, two. We're speaking about some of the future guests that's going to be coming on. Our slots become available, and as I mentioned, the person that come on, Barry's pulled his phone out and said two, two, two. So the way I kind of look into it is that what you're thinking and feeling at that time and a not synchronized number comes to you, you should listen to that message. Yeah, no, I, I think that there's definitely something to be said for that where there are things, but it's not necessarily that some divine entity sent you this message. It's more that you were able to realize your desires and you saw it in a pattern. 
Because right. when you say, oh, like this number follows me around, it's because you're paying attention to that number because it means something to you. Not because this number knows and is following you around. That's not reality. It's that you've got a relationship with whatever this mm. number or detail or color is and then you're finding that association. I remember I had mermaid hair for a while, which was purple and blue and green and all this. And I thought when I got it that it was something really unusual. And after I got it, I started seeing it everywhere. <laughs> like Major. everyone Major. has mermaid hair. And I'm like, no, why does everyone have it? Did I just start this trend? But really, it's that you notice it now because yeah, it, it has more. some meaning to you. Right, because it's in your awareness. Yeah. So what is your plan then, Christine, now in Edinburgh? Is it to like grow this witchcraft dance thing? Or like, is that your plans now that you're here? Or I don't know about grow that witchcraft thing. I don't know if I resonate with that particular um, Definition. idea because I do think that beliefs are personal and mm. I'm not out there to change anyone's belief system if someone wants to ask me questions and learn from me I'm <clears> more than happy to help but I don't really feel called to like spoon feed those kinds of things to uh, people mm -hmm. if they're already intrigued already interested which I have several ladies that actually come and see me specifically for things revolving around witchcraft which is nice i like it um but i'm not going out there and looking for that of right. course it will play into how i teach class because it's part of my belief system and so it will show up in how i interact with people and certain things that i'm intentional about mm -hmm. but i'm not necessarily teaching witchcraft and spreading that witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you teaching yeah. witchcraft? Why are you teaching them? I'm teaching Brazilian Zouk mostly, but also <clears throat> jazz funk. Right. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, which is really nice for me to teach jazz funk because jazz was always my favorite dance growing up. I was always a jazz dancer. I mean, I was a ballerina too, but I really liked jazz and with all the social distancing measures and everything I've had to revert back to more mm. of my solo dance roots which I really enjoy because I really enjoy seeing people work on themselves instead of because with Brazilian Zucas is a partner dance and so a lot of time you see people developing these things around oh every follow is a bad follow every leader is a bad leader and there's all of this blaming mm. and shaming kind of stuff that goes on and this again comes back to the no no, no that's not reality that's you projecting and seeing it back because right. most of the time when people are complaining about dance or dance partners it has to do with their own issues why that's happening so part of what i do as a dance instructor is to help people identify and become aware of those things so that they can be a better partner so that they can enjoy dances with more people so that they can have fun with everyone instead of it just being like oh i go with my significant other and then we bicker while we're dancing because she's always doing it wrong and he's always telling me what to do relationships it's nothing to do with the dancer no, I, I, nothing I, to do with I, the dancer I, I, it's just like <laughs> bringing the domestic out yeah. bringing the domestics out like so you must be excited then about your class you starting yeah no i i mean i love teaching it's definitely something i'm passionate about and dancing is something i'm passionate about <coughs> i like making community and giving people a chance to grow and bond Amazing, man. so yeah i had something really good when i started working here last september and the people that came their the bonding experience we had was really lovely and i thought oh, I can't leave you all here. I have to come back. I have to grow this. I have to create something with these people because I personally couldn't live with myself if I just dropped you. 
Right. So where, was that classes that you had before like lockdown started? Yeah, that was last September when I was here on residency. Right, cool. And during that residency, I taught my Zook series, I taught West Coast Swing series, I also did a few weekend trips down to Manchester and London to do work and it, it became very clear to me, oh, in a small area I have all these options for work to mm. like grow something where nothing exists and I have a purpose here. That's really nice to feel wanted, to feel like I have something to do yeah, that's valuable for people. So, yeah, I am excited about doing that. So yeah. for anybody that actually wants to join your classes, how would they be able to find you? To yeah, so you could go to christinecrossy.com. That's K and K, K-R-O-S-I. It's Crossy, Christine with a K. Yeah, on Facebook. So my website is christinecrossy.com, but you also could find me on Facebook. Right, okay. And we'll put the links in Insta on our Instagram page and stuff as well. So we also find some have dance lessons. Yeah. Some couples that need some domestic therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about the therapy, because of lockdown, I had to change my format and do things online. And because of the interaction online, there became more and more focus on the self and the mindset mm -hmm. and the physical rehabilitation and how all of those things play together. And it became clear to me that what I was doing needed something to accredit it so that people could use it and see it for what it is, which is therapy. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I need to go back to school. I'm now already in school, but <laughs> I need to go and do a post-grad because I did a degree in psychology when I was in Seattle and I didn't actually go anywhere with that. I ended up going a completely different route because I thought this is something I'm interested in. This is relevant. This like helps save the world. I want to do geology. And then all this stuff is going on with my job that would be able to have me here and I thought you know I should go for dance therapy and accredit myself start working for the NHS or whatever and not be in the position that I'm in right now where what I do is a social hobby for people and when it's a social hobby for people to come and take a dance class, especially now, that's not something that people want to spend money on when they don't have it. So. So is that, are you doing that just now? You get I it? just sent in my application today. Oh, this is a good luck. Oh, good luck, man. Thank you. So how long would that take to, to get? To get a master's? Uh, Part-time would be three years. Really? And then you'd be a qualified dance <laughs> therapist yes amazing yeah. that's brilliant right? that's cool. I, I, I so think that i think stuff like that can be a, a, a girl i know who used to work opposite she now lives up in orkney with her husband she does uh, she does art therapy yeah Aye, she says it's like changed like like people she knows it's like really helped with them so i definitely think there's like that thing for like dance or art, they'd definitely be like a therapeutic type of, definitely. Type of thing, like, definitely. definitely, man. I mean, I've seen it be therapeutic for people over the course of me teaching dance and also focusing on things, not just what their bodies are doing, but what their emotions are with those things. All right, just like channeling the energy. Yeah, so, I mean, I've seen it work. <clears throat> And I've seen people's mindset change. I've seen their bodies change. I've seen their relationships with their body change. Mm -hmm. And like, this is powerful, potent stuff to see that evolution in someone. And I feel like doing it just in a social environment is somewhat doing it an injustice mm -hmm. because there's so much more that you could get out of that if people would take that into account when they start it. You know? Because uh, yeah. they're coming at it with this mindset of, I'm coming <clears throat> here to shut off and have fun, which there is its own therapy in that, 
but if you're coming into it with the approach of I'm going to tune in with my body and I'm going to work out all the crud in here so that I can be fully conscious in my space, that's great. I wish more people would start from that place versus having to get to that place because they plateaued. Yeah. Do you think your like experience in, like being in so many like different places like because you, like you're coming across as very wise, eh? Do you know what I mean? Do you think like your experience of being in like so many places and travelled about a bit, you think that's give you like a good kind of like grounding type thing? Being, if you if you know what I mean. Being very independent from a very young age. I would say has done a lot of that. Traveling around solo as a female also it's does that, that right. because I know me comparative to other people my age that maybe haven't had the same life experience or even people that are much older than me will have a lot of fear in their approach to things that I would have no fear about. Mm because I trust in myself to figure it out where other people will go oh but but this but how are you gonna do how are you gonna combat this I'm like well it hasn't come up yet so do I worry about that when, yeah. it, when it comes up I definitely yeah. and this situation definitely teaches you that and I feel like I've already had all of these life experiences that actually makes me fairly well qualified to cope with coronavirus because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, there's this obstacle. What can I do around that obstacle? What can I do on top of that obstacle? Like, well, what, what can I do in this situation to maximize this time? And I would say I really have maximized my time. Mm -hmm. So when I hear people's stories about how hard it's been for them, I empathize that it's been hard for them. But at the same time, I'm like, but you could do so much more. Yeah, adapt. I know yeah. everybody's had to, everybody's had to adapt. It has been like, guy, just it's not like even had a choice. You were just like, right, okay, this is. You just had, you just had to, eh? you just had to whatever you done. It was like, you, you just had to, man, you just had to adapt. It's like, man, it's just been, and you'll just look back years down the line at this time, eh? You'll just be like, man, that was the year that just kind of changed, like everything. If you know what I mean, that changed the direction that we were. Going how you do things, Aye. you know, it's just that uh, multi, multi levels. I know it's just been crazy, man. You can't even see half of them. I know, I know it's not <laughs> one here for a few years. So, <laughs> so what, Christy, what would be your like? Because me and Daryl, we say that we've got a lot of wisdom, but we're not really. <laughs> I've learned that in the past few shows, man. Where are you dead, People coming over and say, all right, we thought we knew a lot. Don't talk, yeah, don't talk. So what would be like, like you've got a lot of experience traveling and stuff, and you've got like a degree in, in psychology. Like, so what like, what like life advice or tidbits of information do you think you could like, you, like what would be your key things to say to anybody? Like if they were watching this and we're looking for like a bit of inspiration or a bit of like, that we're feeling in a bit of a sort of dark place or like how, what, what would you say to them? Mm. This is where the big spotlight like, just needs to come Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> if I wanted to just say like one thing without going on a total wild goose chase, I would say that people need to work on their guilt and owning their guilt and any word, whether it's guilt, I feel like that's a big one for people, or judgment, mm. is something that people need to change their relationship with that word and what it means. Because there's so many words that we have such a negative mm. connotation to it mm. where it doesn't have to be. Like, what if I said, like, yeah, I'm guilty of creating the Zook scene in Seattle. That's a pretty positive oh, no. statement. Uh, I love yeah, I'm guilty of being not socially distanced from two people that are out of my household. The camera is definitely showing two yards. And he's like family now. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, that's something I can laugh at mm. instead of like 
hanging that guilt around my neck as though I need to hang my head in shame because of the weight of it. I can go, yeah, that happened. And then if I didn't like whatever that was, then I can go, all right, because I did this thing that I didn't like, it gives me perspective. And there's no such thing as bad publicity or bad perspective. It only makes the picture greater. So whoever is watching, definitely don't feel bad about anything that you're guilty of. It is part of the process. Mm -hmm. And the deeper, darker things that we experience allows us to reach more light. Wow. That's great advice, That's eh? really good. That's brilliant. <laughs> I like the way that you looked in the camera yeah. when you said it. Of course. Well, I loved it. <laughs> loved we got to bring them in, right? If I'm saying something to so them, the, So the them. darker the light, no, was it the darker the, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow, the darker the shadow, the brighter the light. That's what you're, yeah. that's what you're saying type thing. Uh, I just got like a vision of uh, Star Wars in my head there, like red lightsaber, blue lightsaber, yeah. it's just got like that whole dark light kind no, of and, and this is something that I also am a huge believer in, when you have visions or when you have gut feelings, like listen to those things and ask yourself what it is. Don't go, oh, that's scary, I don't want to deal with it, or oh, I shouldn't think that, let me shove it under the rug. Like, just be curious about it. I feel like too many times people go, oh, that's bad, or that's evil, or mm. I don't want anything to do with that. And like, that's also a person, that's also part of you. Be curious, be empathetic, go, why are you here? What caused you to be like this? What purpose are you serving? What What is your motivation? Mm. And if we treated these things that are so-called bad with the same love that we do things that we find positive, right. then it's all part of the same thing instead of it being like us against them. There is no us. Right. Now you had a, uh, like, t talking about that, man, that was on like a, uh a coaching call the other week there, you know, for Mindful Talent. Yeah. Uh, it was like a mentor thing. I had to do a presentation and one of the guys had came on about like, how are you looking at life just now? Is it through love or is it through fear? And it was, mm. but he related, that's why like, the Star Wars thing came in with because he related the, the fear to the red lightsaber and the dark side and like the love to like the, the like the Jedi and all that. Yeah, and, uh, it, I, that. And I was like, man, it's such a good like, analogy just for life in general man and that got me thinking was like man george lucas was like watch he was wow. like on it he knew yeah, his shit man he was like, oh, i had this t-shirt when i was younger i was mad star wars fan as my my dad and all that went all came out they went to pictures how many times to see it but i had the the t-shirt and it was a picture of anakin skywalker when he's young when he's leaving when he's wee it's village, got Darth Vader shadow it's behind got the dark, dark Vader yeah. shadow That's on, the, on the house behind. And I just, it always stuck me, I always thought, and it was like, when he was obviously going up to the panel with Yoda and that, they were saying that he had too much fear, he had too much stuff that was mm -hmm. holding him back, but that's why he wasn't getting to train to be a Jedi, because all the stuff with his mum and leaving and uh, his worry and all that kind of stuff, he let that all build up, didn't, uh, he, didn't he? Which made him turn into... So we've all got to try and become our own Jedi type thing. Yeah, and it's up to you whether you want to be Yoda, or if you want to be like a trickster, kind of a joker, or if you want to be uh, Obi-Wan. Are you like... I could get him, I could get him in this conversation, I could, choo <laughs> I could choose a character for Star Wars, I can't even for you, like, uh, okay, please, tell I us. I can't even for you, what was the one We want to know that you're Luke Skywalker, all right? What was just, the one for you, uh, what, what did we think of you before? It was, a. Uh, Harry Potter, right? I couldn't, Potter, I couldn't right. choose one, right. that's fine. For Star, Star Wars, Wars right? now, yeah. everybody would want to go Luke Skywalker, eh? Everybody would want to go Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um, I, for some reason, oh, don't think that you would. I, I'm Obi Wan, like yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm old Ben Kenobi, massively. I Yoda, was, definitely. You know that, I, yeah. oh, definitely after today's show, you're definitely Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the, the wise one, man. Yeah, the wise one. The wise one. Yeah. My daughter's called Ray. 
Oh, yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. you go. Next phase, next generation. Ah, that's a nice name, like. Yeah, yeah nice there was a name. slight. Was it short for anything? Um, well, a couple of ties, obviously. The name came up at the very end. We weren't really quite sure about names, but the name Ray came up. We did see, obviously, Ray from Star Wars. I'm quite, I like Egyptian kind of mythology stuff, so like the Iron nice. Ra, Ray the Sun God, and all that right. kind of stuff. So Ooh. it's all kind of connected to kind of that. And then when she was born, in the morning it was raining, and when she was born, the sun was coming through the windows. Ray. When she was born, so it was like, Ray, it has to be. Brilliant, so man. it was, uh, it was class. This is what happens, like these things, they come to us, we see all of these things around us and we have to just go, yep, okay. It works. Yeah. And it's, nice. it's not questioning that then when it happens, eh? it's not like thinking about it too much, it's almost just being like, right, I, I've got a feeling to do that or say that, or and you've just got to kind of like follow that. Yeah. Yeah. wonder if you'd ever get to a point. You ever read a book called The Surrender Experiment, Christine? I haven't actually. It's good, yeah. It's a yeah. this guy that pretty much just like lives, like he's older now, like, but he, he pretty much lived his life like that, almost like trying to get him listening pretty much all the time to his intuition. And he didn't, it didn't matter like where it took him or what it made him do. He just like he lived his whole day. life and like just wanted to meditate for like Aye. as many hours as possible a day. Mm. And he ended up on that journey of being like, walking barefoot and becoming quite, you know, spiritual, whatever it was, meditation all the time, ended up building a temple in America, he ended up then... He was close to going to jail as well, though, yeah, at some point then. Yeah, because the company, because he built this massive tech company, so he then taught himself to write code, he bought this computer, he felt like compelled to do it, I'd just seen it in the window, and he's like, it was the first one, the first computer, computers that were ever out, and he just got his computer started writing code. Before you know it, you've got all these people and living in the, like, the wild, the built, houses that they've built on their own, build this massive tech company that worth billions. Uh, and it's like... just insane how he went from being this guy who left his life, went away on his own to meditate, and then found himself, he went down full circle. Aye, it's, it's, a, it's such a good book, because it's like he doesn't, he doesn't overanalyze. Mm, possibly, that'd be, sure. ah, that'd be one we need to find out actually, like, we need to find out. Like he out. just kept, even though he didn't want to do something, because he was so in touch with what he was, he completely surrendered himself to any experience that came to him. Right. So like people were coming up, like a woman, he built a house and then a woman came and just started helping him and then she was like, well I'm going to build a house. And he's like, oh. Inside, he said, I don't want you to build a house next door, but he's like, I'm going to, I'll have to let her do it, and then off the back of her building that house, and then they then built a company together, so the police arrived at the, uh, the yes. temple in the house, and he's like, what's mm -hmm. going on here, and he's like, I oh, know they're going to make me build it now, we've not got any, like, building warrants or anything like that, and the, the guy's like, I need, I need you to build what you built here, and <laughs> man, it's, the police it's snowball, just man. keeps going it's and going, snowball. it's like, and then wow. he, he has a company called Made With Love, so he has the, the the company of building houses and projects for people, and that then develops. And it's nice. amazing, man. Yeah. Honestly, it's, a, it's such a good book. Yeah. It's such a good yeah, book. It's, it's, it's almost just like saying, right, like I give up. I'm gonna like you bring to me what needs to be brought to me, and I will just like try and follow it as much as I can. It's such a good read, man. I need to find it, I've lost it man, I can't, yeah, actually I can't find it man, it's such a good book man. I'll turn up at the right time. Somebody's maybe got it. I probably right. I mean, so... It it. Whenever it is required, it will appear. You brought your tarot cards. I you, did, I was, like was a, requested to Aye, you're going to tarot cards. Says you're going yeah. to do like a, an overall energy for the season or something. Or yeah, or? so... Um, full moon happens in Virgo. Right. Um, on the second, for those of us tuning in that have no idea what it means, um, there's a full, there's a full moon every month. Am I right in saying that? So, um, now you get to learn some trivia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> normally, there's only one full moon in a month, but right. every once in a while, there's a blue moon, which is the second full moon in one month, which actually happens this October. Right. We have a full moon on the 1st of October and the 31st of October, which also happens to be, okay. yeah, 
when the veil between the living and the dead is most yes. thin and we feel the most um, energetic, but also tied into the changing of the seasons and being the last harvest of uh, the year. Right, okay. Of everything that grew during the growing season. Right. So, yeah, it's going to be a blue moon, Halloween, and last harvest all in one day. That's going to be a powerful day. So, supposedly, I'm going to have a party here at the biscuit wonder if, factory. Wonder if it's we'll a see. I wonder if it's a Friday. It's wonder a Saturday. I was going to say if it's a Friday, we maybe could have done some, some sort of special, uh, yeah, Halloween special. Ah, uh, Halloween special or something like that. I asked <laughs> Fiona to do a Halloween special here on Halloween, and she didn't say yo no yet, but we'll see how things change. Aye, yeah, we'll need to see what happens under, under current conditions. Nick, like it's cancelling all our plans. Okay, man, <laughs> I know. Hey, for the greater good, eh? So... Yeah. In terms of the process of how you would go about handling, how would I actually do a reading? No, but handling if, the if cards. You came to me and you were like, "I yeah. want a reading. Something's wrong in my life. Help me." Well, it's <laughs> something that obviously I've been working with tarot cards for probably a couple of years. Not not quite a couple of years, but because I'm really into astrology, I like put your slide yourself, but more intuitively. Like, okay. I'm a, obviously Sagittarius, so I like to find out how okay. my month's going to pan out, try and take some intuitive messages from it, and okay. see how it actually, like, evolves in the reality of my life. Like, wow, okay. that was saving that, or that was saving that, and having, like, specific readers and stuff. Okay. So I got the Rider Wade deck, and I started practicing with them, because I went to a shop up in, beside Greyfriars Bobby in Edinburgh. Mm. Yeah. I know which one you're talking yeah. about, I've actually been there. She, <laughs> Yeah, she was um, she was really helpful. She showed me some crystals and stuff as well to wear, and um, I, I, she was telling me to just practice with the Rider right Waite deck. So in terms of intuitively, I like I've done a couple of readings for some people. It's been quite close, mm -hmm. but in terms of like tips for like starting off, like I heard like holding the pack and knocking them with your knuckles and stuff. Yeah, and so a sage and is that all? We don't have the incense burning anymore, but we, we already like consecrated the space. And um, as we're shuffling, as we're cutting the deck, we want to do so with intention. So whatever the question is that we have. So if our question is, what is the season going to behold? Very general question. General questions are good. It's not good to ask yes or no questions because you're not going to get a yes or no answer. Yeah. So don't ask that. If you want to say, What's up with my career? You could say that. And so we'll just put a little bit of energy into the cards when we're doing that. It is. If you say that out loud or are you saying it like in your head? I'm saying it in my head. In your head, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, if you were using a card for multiple people, then I would definitely knock on the cards to clear from other people's energy. Right. Um, I didn't specifically think about the season when I was shuffling, so I'll do a couple more of those because I was listening to you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Look at that! Us. This freaking card keeps following me around! Us. The sea, the season, the season, <laughs> lovers. Yeah, so, so see, that's definitely a thing, like cards will follow you yeah. around. I will tell you a story which was amazing. The other day I did a reading for my friend. See, now I like messed them all up. I don't like, um, it, oh, see that card, we'll talk about it in a second here. So my friend was asking me about her love life because she just broke up with this dude and she wanted to know what was like the next step. And then I had her pull a card because if it's for someone else, you should have them pull the card because they can work the best magic for themselves because they know and can put the energy in where I mm. can only like do so much if right. I'm an observer in the situation. But as soon as she said that this was a question she wanted to ask, I was like, you're gonna pick this card. I didn't say it, but I said, I know what card you're gonna pick. I know your card, I know your answer because it just came to me and then she didn't pull that card and I was like and I'm like okay I know what this is and I'm like 
I'm gonna pull this card for you. And so I, you know, I did my thing and I felt energy over a particular card and I'm like, this card. Pulled it out, found this card. Whoa. And then I did a reading for myself the other day and I asked myself a similar question and I got that card. I'm like, oh, it was for me. It was for me. So you had oh, like oh. Some the it, it had head. nothing to do with anyone else. It was right. for me. Right. Uh, and how do you, I take it that the only way you kind of separated that was by finding out in terms of the, the, the course of time. Yeah. So you yeah, couldn't yeah. realize that at the time. Right. So, anyway, this in is for. In terms of the card, the fool, what does that card mean to you? It's the beginning. Yeah. Is that what the fool card means? The beginning? Yeah. Is it? Some people take it to be the end, some people take it to be the beginning, which is the same thing, mm. strangely enough. But. Yeah. So, what are you doing here? You're doing a pick up card for we're, the I guess, season? I guess we're only doing one card, right? We're not doing a particular <clears throat> draw. Um, I was only gonna take one card. Right. If that's but, what I think if that's what you do. There's many different ways you can do spreads. You could pick one card if it's like a simple thing. You could do a spread, which I like to do the spread, which is my mind, my body, my spirit. So the one card is for my body and so on and so forth. You could also do past, present, future. I was, I am, I will be. These are common spreads that you can do with three cards. And that's the one I do. And then there's also connection spreads where you do yourself, the other person, your challenge, their challenge, your unifying um, purpose. I do connection spreads a lot because people often want to ask about their love lives. Mm -hmm. And so connection is very common in terms of that particular spread. You could also do a clarifying spread, which gives you an answer and then three contributing factors. And then there's the Celtic cross, which is a 12 card, like really intensive thing that is very detailed. I don't do that one very often. Hence, I don't have all the details to be able to share it with you. I'd have to read it in the book. Or you can just take one card. Which is what you're going to do now. Yeah, because this isn't a proper table and it's also like the last quarter of the moon. It's a time of um, letting go. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what came up. Oh, let's see. Well, so then what was your intention there when you were doing it? Then what was your like the intention, the question you were kind of I was asking about in your head? what is the new phase about? Right. Is it like a general yeah, just okay. Let's see. Yeah. Right, okay. Let's see. Looks like it's there already. But I just like to check. Steady hand, eh? See, normally I would have them a little bit, they're kind of scrunched up in here, so I feel like, and I will tell people this all the time, like if you can't decide between two cards, spread them around and then actually touch them and whichever one speaks to you, that's the one. That's a good, it's a good card. Yeah? I've never drawn it before. I don't draw cups very often. I tend to draw pentacles and wands, personally. And then the Empress card follows me around all the time. That's normally the card that comes up to identify me. It's like my signifier card. And then I regularly will get things like strength, the fool, um, the Herophant likes to follow me around. I don't get cups very often. I certainly have not gotten the Ace of Cups. So, so Ace of Cups. Is, so let's see what so this is like the, What's the new season about? Yeah. 
Or what's the energy for the new season? <laughs> nice. Okay. Love's beginnings. Aces mark the beginning of exciting new phases. Since the suit of cups deals specifically with love and emotion, you are in for a real treat. Expect to enter a blissful time of health, joy, and friendship. A new love could be on the horizon. You may feel that you're making a whole new start. Just go with it and allow this feeling to revitalize your spirit. And you know what? You know what? You know what's good about that is that be, like, so I would say that's a pretty. That's a very positive card. Aye, it's a very uplifting, positive card, which is kind of going contrary to what's like what's in the news and getting betrayed and all that just now. So that's actually. I think that's a like a nice energy to yeah. get here, if you know what I mean. Yeah, what I felt out of reading it, I haven't gotten too much into the intuition of just looking at what I feel from looking at the card. Um, I mean, I definitely feel that there's like sunshine coming into the cup. Like, it's definitely an abundance in unity. I see that um, just by looking at it, but. When it's talking about blissful time of health, joy, friendship, and like new love on the horizons, I don't feel, and I will say this to anyone that I do readings with, like it doesn't always have to be literal, mm. but it does to me feel like this is a new chapter, new beginnings, um, and that it will be grounded in human relationships rather than. Um, career kinds of things. Oh, connections. To me, to me that makes sense, eh? Mm. To me that makes yeah. sense, so like, a new phase where people will focus on like, being human, connecting yeah. with people. Yeah. Right? Like, like, Which how, I feel like that's accurate. Well, how many people, I don't know, how, like I've spoken to a few people who have just like, who have totally like changed career in that, and yeah. then like during this time, they're like, nah, stuff it, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing that job, I'm gonna do this, and, it's almost like people are becoming more aware of their own, like, I don't know, their own soul, their own humanity, and yeah. they're just like that, like that isn't as important as me following my heart, in a way. And to me, that's what you, is kind of coming across from what you say, but I don't know, nice. what do you think? No, I think um, in terms of the ace, like the ace is like, you think in terms of cards, the best cards you can get, the Ace of Cups, obviously, it kind of talks, for me, in terms of like, you can see the yellow and you can see in terms of like, like there obviously is a brightness and stuff there, but I think, I'm looking at from what I'm seeing in my reality, and it's definitely like you're saying, people have started new jobs and people mm. have changed their ways and maybe come to a, a end of time where it's like, I need to kind of roll with this now right. and it's a good space, it's a good positive card to actually put yourself out there and connect with people right. on a, maybe a different basis, a different space that you're used to being in and you've kind of got the ace of cups behind you, you know, giving you that support and stuff. So yeah, so it's a, it's a great, I say come on, it's a great card, I haven't seen a lot of aces lately, so. Nice. Uh, amazing, man. Cool. Christine, thanks for doing that, man. That's yeah, cool, no man. problem. That's cool. I <laughs> well, that's an amazing way to like. That's some. Uh, bottom of the deck. Aye. Oh, oh, is it? So, what does that mean? You what? Bottom of the deck, number 11, I think. Butterfly. Oh. Yeah. Caterpillar uh, to. The two of pentacles. Is that the two? I've seen the one and the one. So, caterpillar coming out there. Yes, so yeah, 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 like, uh, exactly. Uh, it makes it make complete sense. You've you've know you've infinite money. That's infinite, what that means. Infinity. That's right. <laughs> infinity symbol the eight. Oh, so that's that thing you were going to do. Pentacles are often called the coins, so it often has to do with your finances. Oh, yeah, man. Are you, you mentioned that the other week, yeah. that, that same light. So we've all been in caterpillar mode for a while, and it's time to spread your wings. Ah, it's like that, right, a little bit, man. So it's like, what a positive way to finish the show, I know. Amazing. I know. Christine, nice. thanks so much for doing that. Yeah, thanks so much for, for coming having on. me. So remember, Christine's classes start next Monday and Wednesday at the Biscuit Factory. Yeah. So uh, we'll put the, the link yeah. in, in the... Aye. Yeah. So aye, thanks so much, Christine, for coming on and just... Just 
shown us your yeah. whistle dream. Thanks for the wisdom. <laughs> the wisdom and your wisdom and like knowledge. Uh, when I put a picture up, I'll have it like the ones you sent me, but I'll put me one of Yoda in as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Baby, you're the, the green lightsaber, <laughs> man. Right, you know, blue lightsaber, definitely, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely a green lightsaber. Right. Oh, yeah, green eye. Brilliant. Right, another show, man, another Friday. Folks, whatever Thanks, you're up guys. to, man, have a great weekend. Yeah.